President Biden responding to concerns that money sent to the Gaza Strip for humanitarian aid will end up in the hands of Hamas. Today, I'm also announcing $100 million in new U.S. funding for humanitarian assistance in both Gaza and the West Bank. This money will support more than 1 million displaced and conflict-affected Palestinians, including emergency needs in Gaza. If Hamas diverts or steals the assistance, they will have demonstrated once again that they have no concern for the welfare of the Palestinian people. And it will end. <clears throat> As a practical matter, it will, it will stop the international community from being able to provide this aid. National security and military analyst Dr. Rebecca Grant joins us now. Dr. Grant, good morning to you. There are a lot of areas of agreement between Republicans and Democrats when it comes to Israel. Not a lot of Republicans are on board with $100 million going to Gaza and the West Bank. But now that the money is going there, is there any way to prevent Hamas from commandeering this aid? Well, Carly, I didn't think that aid had to be announced right now either. It just really depends. If this goes to the Rafah gate near Egypt and is watched closely, then maybe. But no, it's a risk. It's just another $100 million out there. And I'm sorry, there's really no way they can guarantee what's going to be done with it. I'm going to take it as just a part of a bigger diplomatic game that he needed to make a play with. Can you think of any entity, person, group that this money could go to to ensure it doesn't obviously end up in the hands of Hamas and obviously end up in other corrupt actors. Because I'm trying to go through the players and it seems like, boy, Hamas really does have a monopoly on that area, whether it's, you know, announced that it's Hamas or Hamas proxies in and around the region. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. And this is a group that can smuggle in everything they need to make thousands of missiles and do it indigenously. You know, they control everything in Gaza. So while I think we'd all like to hope it would go for medicine for wounded civilians, well, there is no guarantee. I don't think President Biden can really give us a guarantee. Actually, I don't think he did give us a guarantee. His statement was pretty weak, I thought. Uh, Dr. Grant, the U.S. still doesn't have an ambassador to Israel, if you can believe it. And the president's nominee, Jacob Blue, was facing a lot of criticism for Republicans because of his record on Iran. Uh, and the reason for that is, is the Senate investigation found that he, while he was working in the Obama administration, granted a license that tried to convert $5.7 billion from U.S. banks to Iranian assets. So what do you think about him in this entire this whole situation? really bad timing. I bet they're sorry they didn't get that nomination through. It would have been easy a month ago. But I have to agree with the senators that are asking questions. You know, certainly he's a good public servant. But their point is that the Obama administration policy toward Iran was terrible and got us into this mess. So, yes, it's absolutely right to question him. He was a very high-ranking official. They all thought that giving money was going to make, you know, solve some of the problems with Iran. And here we are with Iran's well-funded proxies creating all this trouble. I think they're right to question him very hard. All right, Dr. Grant, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your perspective.